Real stories of werewolves, the dogmen from history, from your emails, illustrated and animated with the democratizing magic of machine learning AI. Welcome to Scary Stories. Mistaken for a werewolf. Dear Scary Stories NYC, I had a weird dogman experience. This is not a recent one either. Let's see, if I'm sending this to you in 2024, and it happened in 1999, that means... Oh wow, the story's now a quarter of a century old. And if I was 20 when it happened, well, I must be getting up in years, huh? I just started writing and I've already gotten myself depressed. I was in college at the time, but I was going to a school fairly close to home. I really could have even lived at home while going there. Although it would have been an hour's drive to and from my classes, I was renting a room in a house within walking distance of the school, and I was a junior that year. But this stuff took place in my hometown, where my parents both still live. This is Wisconsin we're talking about here, and it's on the country side of the suburbs, but I better not get more specific than that. Now obviously Wisconsin is known for werewolf sightings, and even back then around the turn of the century, people were already talking about the Dogman. He was pretty famous already, even though YouTube hadn't started up yet. Now I bought a werewolf or Dogman costume for Halloween that year, which was fairly realistic, at least by 1999 standards. If I stood in the shadows, I really look like a werewolf, and you'll see later on in the story that I'm not just saying that. I sent you some links to costumes I found online that are sort of like the one I got that year. But I don't know if the one I bought is even still being made. It had shoulder pads to make me look bigger and stronger. And it had padding all over which made me look less like a man and more like a canine. For instance, the legs were padded in such a way that it made me look like I had dog legs and not human ones. My head was completely covered with this dog-like werewolf mask. And when I put my clawed gloves on, I was completely hidden inside the costume. So I was getting this costume not for a big Halloween party at school, but for a girlfriend I had started up with who lived a couple of blocks from my parents' house back in my hometown. She invited me to go trick-or-treating with her friends, and I guess I bought the expensive costume to show off that I was a little bit older than her high school senior friends. In those days, being three or four years older than the girl was still a good thing. I don't even know if men and women are allowed to date anymore. My kids are 7 and 5, so I guess I'll be finding out soon what the modern rules of romance are. The girl, let's call her Loretta, gave me a corner to meet up with her and her friends. She asked me what I was coming as, and I stupidly told her it was a surprise. The meeting corner was right by a spooky abandoned lot covered in trees, so just meeting there was sort of a Halloween dare. I saw some young people in costumes on the corner waiting. Had I decided it would be funny to creep into the woods and sneak up behind those kids. Then I could jump out at them going rawr and we could all have a good laugh. At least that was the way it played out in my mind. As I chuckled to myself and I got in position to leap out. Before I did though I surveyed the people there and I didn't see Loretta. So I figured she must be late. I thought I should probably wait till she showed up before I pulled my hysterically funny prank so that she would join in the laughter and see how awesome I was. I tried to find a comfortable position but that costume was not really made for prowling through the woods. I started to sweat a lot in that costume and then a cold October wind began to blow. The combination of hot and cold made me sneeze which is not the thing you want to do when you have a full head mask on, generally speaking. So I had some stuff going on and I didn't notice the boys from Loretta's group. Sneaking up behind me, sneaking up on them. They heard my sneeze and came to see who the man in the woods was. Only it wasn't a man. It was me. And in the dark under the tree cover, they really thought I was a Wisconsin werewolf. So they did what any other red-blooded young man would do in that situation. They beat the bejeebus out of me. Out of the monster in the woods, I mean. It was entirely in self-defense in their minds at the time, and I fully understand that. They didn't know that I wasn't going to hurt them or eat them, 
and they did the natural thing to do under the circumstances. Then they rolled me down this hill that I had no idea existed before I was getting banged up rolling down the side of it. I landed in a creek at the bottom, inhaling water and coughing and gagging until I could finally breathe again. I sat there in the water, getting my $100 suit all wet. And the next thing I knew, I was seeing stars and lights got turned out. When I woke up, I could tell by the pain in the back of my head that I had been knocked out. Trying to get up proved to be a bad idea at first, so I slunk back down against the cold stone wall, and I tried to focus my eyes enough to look around the dark, smelly, freezing room I was now inside. At first all I could make out was my own breath in front of my face, but after some time I saw that I was inside a chamber in a hand-carved stone place, or maybe it was naturally formed. I couldn't really tell in the dark with my head aching. I was inside a room in a cave. That was where I realized I was. I was still, for some reason, wondering what I banged my head on and how I ended up in this new place. I still hadn't put it together that someone had perpetrated violence upon my person and then removed me bodily to this new premises. But that missing information was filled in for me in another few seconds. Into the room entered a large man wearing a similar costume to mine, carrying a large hunk of smelly, rotting meat hanging out of its costume's head's mouth. It tossed the meat to the floor in front of me and then demonstrated how he could move the jaw of his dogman mask. Mine was stuck in place, never fully opening or shutting. That was where I looked out of, but this guy's costume was better than mine. The disgusting, rotting meat and the man in the costume both smelled absolutely awful, and I felt like I had somehow ended up in a new version of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, crossed with deliverance. I tried to take my mask off, which now had dried sneeze all over the inside of it, but I found it was stuck and I couldn't get it off. This finally made me panic, as I have a bit of claustrophobia, and it kicked in in that moment. As I struggled and writhed in an attempt to free my head from that big mask, I found myself being grabbed and roughly handled by that other weirdo in his fancier dogman costume. It didn't take too long to figure out that this guy had some extremely bad intentions toward me, and I flailed about trying to get out of his grip. During the struggle, I turned and faced this man, and I saw his mask from inches away while his nostrils flared. His eyes looked all around. His eyelids blinked. This was not a mask. This was a real dog man. I found it hard to see much of anything, looking out through the mouth of the mask into the dark cave. But I saw a rock on the cave floor that I thought I could reach. Once I grabbed it, I returned the dog man's favor from before, and I was able to clock him on the back of his noggin. He wasn't hurt badly, but he was surprised and he dropped me. That gave me the chance to run away, which I did, slamming face first into a stone wall. I kept readjusting my course and slamming into wall after wall until I found myself a way out of that chamber and eventually out of the cave entirely. Once I was outside, for some reason I found I could get the mask off and I ran through the woods holding it tucked under my arm like it was a football. By chance, I ran into Loretta and her group, and since I had my mask off, they didn't beat me up any further. She seemed to think it was funny that I was covered in mud and leaves, and she invited me to join along with her friends for the rest of their trick-or-treating. I don't think I was going to say yes as young and girl-happy as I was in those days. Running into cave walls, getting kicked down a hill by Loretta's friends... Getting knocked out by the monster? None of those things had put me in the mood to beg my neighbors for pieces of candy. But I never actually answered her yes or no. What happened instead was that the dogman burst out of the woods behind me. Everyone saw him. And we all ran away, screaming like little girls, especially us boys. Honestly, I thought I'd lost the creature a long ways back. 
But you know about dogs and their homing instincts, right? Well, this guy was the homeliest of them all. It's a miracle that all I ended up with was some bruises. It could have gone so much worse. Since that time, I have worn other werewolf costumes on two other Halloweens. In both of those cases, however, I told all my friends beforehand what I was going as. In addition, I didn't sneak up behind anyone, and so I had no repeat problems of being mistaken for a werewolf. Hey, if you're wondering what costume the story submitter said was closest to what he remembers his costume being in the story from 1999, it was this one. The Seasonal Visions Men's Deluxe Werewolf Costume. And if you would like to get your hands on one of these, we've got a link to their sale page on Target. If you do buy from that link, this channel would make a commission just so you know. But if you do buy and wear this costume, keep a friend with you to let everyone know you aren't a real dogman or werewolf, just an incredible simulation. Dogman thought my moose costume was real. Dear Scary Stories NYC, I don't know if you might want to save this next one for your Halloween show or something, because it happened in October, but I've been thinking about it lately for some reason. I just can't get it off my mind, and it's gotten me into this mood where I need to finally write it all down. These events happened a long time ago, in the before times, when people still used to have fun with each other, and you never asked them who they voted for. Yes, I'm talking about the magical wonderland known as 2015 which I admit I spend a lot of time wishing I could time travel back to. This is a story of a Halloween costume party held in an old family mansion of a former friend of mine. There was a bunch of us college students there, and I don't know if my friend's parents knew that he was using their summer home in northern Wisconsin in such a fashion. Maybe they did, but I certainly didn't see anyone older than us on the property that night. I went as what I thought was Bullwinkle J. Moose from the old cartoon show, but several people informed me was merely a generic moose costume. It was not realistic, it was cartoony, and no human being would be confused into thinking I was anything but a college student. But the costume was furry, and it was somewhat warm that night, at least inside of the getup, so I was beginning to smell like some kind of a forest creature by the middle of the evening. Now, I was unaware in those days about furry culture, and I'm not going to get into any of that here. But the reason I encountered the dogman that night was because of a girl that I later came to understand was into that whole furry thing. I thought she was flirting with me, but she later explained it had a lot to do with what she called my moose persona, and that I just called a costume I rented. We were both in the same place at the same time, but she was interpreting things one way, and I was interpreting them another. I thought she was interested in me, the guy inside the costume, but it was sort of more complicated on her end. At any rate, she's a very nice person and one of the few people at that party that night who I still keep in touch with. I mean no criticism of her or her lifestyle or her interests, but we were misunderstanding each other on that particular night. At any rate, she and I ended up sitting out behind the house under the somewhat bright moon. This was not on Halloween that year, but it was in the second half of October sometime, as I recall. Every time I tried to pull my sweaty old giant moose head off so I could see her better, the girl would put it back on me. Besides being hot inside there, it was kind of hard to see. So I was trying not to get too annoyed with her. I wasn't a Don Juan in school, so I didn't get walked out to the woods by girls all that often. I was quite excited, and the last thing I wanted to do was offend her. But at the same time, I wished she would let me take that nasty smelly headpiece off. And then suddenly she screamed bloody murder, and I looked all around, not understanding what was happening. Pulling at that moose head, I discovered that the girl had reattached it in some way. Something was tied to something else. 
and it was taking me longer than usual to get it off me. I couldn't hear her screaming any longer, and she didn't respond when I called to her, so I was pretty sure she had run away. This caused my heart to beat hard, and for my hands to shake. The harder I tried to get the moose head off, the longer it was taking. I started to hyperventilate, and I felt like I was going to pass out. I remember finally lifting it up off my head and getting my first breath of air that didn't smell like sweat and beer. And then in the next split second, I remember seeing the beast man out of the corner of my eye. I was sitting there on a tree stump as though offering myself up to an immense beast that walked on two legs and literally drooled all over its chest as it eyed me like I was a lobster dinner. It was some kind of a huge dog with its tongue hanging out, and yet it was some other kind of thing at the same time. Do you know the way your video thumbnails show that really broad-chested gray dog man? Well, this one had that same kind of a chest. I'd say its fur was darker than gray, though. It was like a longer version of the fur of a black bear, but the epidermis under the fur was more of a dead zombie gray than the bright pink usually associated with black bear skin. Some people have suggested to me that what I really saw was a big black bear with a skin condition. And I am not a zoologist, so I can't tell you for certain. I do know that in that instant, I was not thinking that I was seeing a bear. No, this was a monster. It had the shoulders and the chest of a very large human being. And bears are just not built that way. Plus, you can't disregard the fact that it clearly had a canine head with big dog fangs and that its tongue hung out as it breathed, dripping and pouring its dog saliva all over itself and the forest floor. I stood up and turned around facing the beast who I had to look up to as its bright eye shine glared back down at me. I was six feet tall. I hit six feet when I was 18 or 19 and then just stopped growing, so I know that's how tall I was that night. Whatever this was, it was taller than me by at least eight or 10 inches, probably more. The creature didn't seem at all confused by my presence. He didn't seem to care what kind of animal I was. He just seemed to be enjoying smelling my fear, and it looked as though he thought I'd make a tasty meal. Both of us were surprised by the sound of leaves and twigs breaking behind me, and the beast withdrew into the darkness of the woods so quickly. It was almost as though he had disappeared by magic. I whirled to find some complete jerks from one of my classes. They were clearly wasted, and they started in making fun of me in my costume right away. I did not fight back. I let them say whatever they wanted as I sidled past them and began walking back to the house across the big lawn that led to those woods. I remember them laughing at me, walking quickly away instead of defending myself from their insults. But I also remember just praying internally that I could get back in that old mansion before the dogman decided to pursue me. I was starting to calm down as the house grew closer and I was thinking of calling a cab to go home as soon as I got inside to safety. The next thing I knew, those rude boys were screaming like little girls and running past me into the house. Their voices were higher pitched than the girls had been and I didn't have to guess twice about what must have scared them. That was the only time I've ever had any sort of cryptid experience or ghost or paranormal or anything even slightly out of the ordinary. And the only reason it happened was because <laughs> Dogman thought my moose costume was real. Thanks, Biggie. And thanks to all of you for watching this far. If you liked it, please click like. If you'd like to see more of our work, please subscribe.
And also click that bell icon if you'd like to be notified when we put out a new episode. To become an executive producer, you can donate to us through the thanks button under each of our videos or through our paypal.me slash peterbernard209 page. To receive cool perks like secret uncensored Dogman episodes far too wild to ever run on this channel, you can become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button or Join our PayPal Subscribers Club at PeterBernard.com. Joining either at the $3 a month level or above gets you access to our over 25 hours of secret uncensored Dogman stories available nowhere else. Do you have a scary story about Dogman or some other kind of high strangeness that happened to you? Let us know by emailing us at scarystoriesnyc at gmail.com or by leaving us a voicemail message at 804 Lascari. You may need to call back on that when it cuts off after I think three minutes. And if you don't want to do any of that stuff, thank you for simply watching to the end. Good night, and have a scary tomorrow. Scary stories.